from the noise. It's the Cube, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. We're back at Moscone, everybody. This is the Cube, Silicon Angle, Wikibon's continuous production of VMworld 2015. We're riding the data wave. Eric Herzog is here. He's the Vice President of Marketing, IBM Storage, in the Hawaiian shirt. Great to see you again, my friend. Well, Dave, thank you very much. As I keep telling people, it's not about data lakes. People have oceans of data these days. Yeah, that's right, oceans of data. John oceans Furrier of would data. love that. Oceans so, of data now. So what's the story? You got the Hawaiian shirt on? What do you got going on across the street? Well, our big thing really is oceans of data. So between all the solutions we have from a storage solution set, our platform computing environment, our joint uh, deal that we do with Cisco with what we call the Versus Stack, and our Spectrum family of software, you know, our customers are saying everything's going digital. And it doesn't matter whether you're a global enterprise, a mid-sized company, or even an SMB. With everything going digital, it isn't about lakes of data, it's about oceans of data. So let's start maybe at the, the Versa stack. The hyperconverge is sort of taking the world by storm. Uh, you're seeing VMware's obviously talking about it. You got a bunch of startups talking about it. When you guys made the move to, to sell the the server business, the x86 server business mm -hmm. to Lenovo, BNT, the acquisition of BNT went with it. It opened up whole new opportunities for IBM from a partnership standpoint, and one of the first guys you went to was Cisco. So talk about that a little well, bit. Well, we've had a great partnership with Cisco. We deliver the VersaStack through our mutual channel partners, so globally, so we have channel partners in all of the GOs yeah. that are selling the VersaStack solution. Um, we started originally with our V7000 product, which allows us to not only provide a strong mid-tier offering, but because of our integration of our Spectrum Virtualize, actually we'll virtualize heterogeneous storage. So over 300 arrays from our competitors can be virtualized, giving any data center or cloud deployment single way to replicate, single way to snapshot, and of course, a single way to actually migrate data, which is a huge issue, obviously, in big deployments. Well, and the SAN volume controller was really the first platform to do that. That was sort of right. the gold standard and the whole, the original you know, tier one, tier two storage sort of was defined by the SAN volume controller capability. Now you've built those capabilities into the... In, into the array. So we started with our um, V7000 store-wise, was the first with the VersaStack. We announced last week two new versions. One, our V9000, which incorporates that same value of the SAN volume controller, but an all flash array, okay? Uh, that product has been incredibly successful for us. Um, we have thousands of customers. We have deployed more petabytes than anyone in the industry and more units than anyone in the industry for you know, some of those analysts that track the number side of the business. We've done more than so anyone. So you're pricing it right, is what you're telling me. We are definitely <laughs> yeah. pricing it right. We do more not. More petabytes? More, more petabytes, petabytes and more units than anybody, by far. But not the most revenue. Second most revenue okay, because, so you're well, we're a fair price for a fair job. <laughs> as opposed to a high price for an okay job. <laughs> That's what we believe in, delivering more value for the money. So we've got that, so that opens up heavy virtualized environments, heavy cloud environments, big data analytics, all those applications were all flash, high-end Oracle deployments, SAP HANA configs, all of those sort of things are ideal. Same time we brought in the V5000 at the lower entry place of the mid-tier, and it's with the UCS Mini from Cisco. So it gives you a lower entry price and allows a couple things, one, you can go in departmental deployments of big enterprise. Two, you can go into remote office deployments and also of large enterprise. But three, it allows you to take the value of a converged infrastructure down into smaller customers because it's a lower entry price point. It's got all the value of the virtualization engine we have in all of our V family of products, the V5, the V7, and the V9 all flash, but it's at a much lower price point with a lower cost UCS mini and a lower cost um, switch infrastructure from from Cisco, so it's a great solution for those big offices, but again, remote and department level, and ideal though to move converged infrastructure down into smaller companies. So, so Cisco has been incredibly successful with that space. When, it, when Cisco first came out, I, I misunderstood it. I said, oh, they're going to fall flat in their face in servers, and I was totally wrong about that because I didn't understand that they were trying to change the game. What's it like partnering with those guys, and how is it added value to your business? Well, it's been very strong for us. One, they've got an excellent channel. Two, they have a great direct sales model, as does IBM. Three, we've been partnering them for ages and ages mm -hmm. and ages. In fact, 
in the 90s, we sold a bunch of our networking technology to Cisco and is now deployed by Cisco. So some of the networking uh, technology that Cisco puts out there to their, to their end users, to their channel partners, into you know, their big telcos, that actually came from IBM when we sold our networking division to Cisco in the mid 90s. So strong partnership ever since then. So let's talk more about the portfolio. Uh, particularly, I'm particularly interested in the whole TSM piece. TSM came over to the storage group, which thrilled me. Um, I think that was a great move by IBM to do that. Whoever made that decision, smart move. Uh, how has that affected, having that storage software capability embedded into the storage business, how has that affected your ability to go to market? Well, it's been great. So that's our Spectrum family. Uh, there are six elements to that. Spectrum Protect, which used to be TSM. Spectrum Control, which used to be the TSC product. Spectrum Virtualize, which is a software version of the SAN volume controller, so you can get it as a software only solution. Spectrum Archive. Spectrum Accelerate, which is a scale out block solution. Think of it as a software version of our XIV platform, but software only. And Spectrum Scale, which gives incredible scale out NAS capability. In fact, Spectrum Scale has a number of customers in the enterprise side, not in the HPC market, but in global enterprises, over 100 petabytes, and we even have one customer that has one exabyte in production under Spectrum Scale. Exabyte. One exabyte in production and not an HPC customer, not, not one of the big universities, not one of the think tanks, but a commercial, large, global Fortune 500 company with an exabyte with Spectrum Scale. So, so talk a little bit more about the strategy. <clears throat> I think people a lot of times misunderstand IBM's approach. They say, okay, IBM's getting out of the hardware business, which they think, infer, oh, we must get out of the storage business. You're not getting out of the storage business, obviously. They hired Zog and Store. <laughs> so, so talk more about the strategy and how you're you know, pursuing that. Yeah, well I'd say a couple things. So first of all, our commitment to storage um, is very strong. We're investing a billion in all flash technology and a billion in Spectrum software, in addition to our normal engineering development for our StoreWise family and our other members of our products that we've already had. So a billion extra in flash and a billion extra in our software family. In addition to that, we've got a method of consumption that we're looking at. So some end users want a full storage solution. Our DS8000, our flash systems, our store-wise. Some customers want to move to the software-defined storage. And in several cases, such as XIV, software-only Spectrum Virtualize. Okay, we've got a number of different ways that you can consume the product. And then lastly, in several of the products, such as Spectrum Scale, Spectrum Accelerate, and a light version of Spectrum Control that we call Spectrum Control Storage Insights, available through a cloud consumption model. So, if the customer wants a comprehensive solution, we have it. If the customer wants software-defined storage, we have it. If the customer wants integrated infrastructure with our VersaStack, we have it. And if the customer wants a cloud storage model of consumption, we have that too. And quite honestly, we think in bigger accounts, they may have multiple consumption models. For example, core data center might go for a full storage solution, but guess what? The cloud solutions would be ideal for a remote or branch office. So talk to me more about the cloud. You're talking about the soft layer. We, hear, we go to the IBM shows, we hear soft layer, blue mix, you know, really so, a lot of momentum uh, there, the DevOps crowd. Right. What's going on there? Spectrum the Accelerate, Spectrum Scale, and Spectrum Control are all available as a soft layer offering. They are not targeting test and dev, they are not targeting you know, just the Bluemix crowd. These are targeting core data center, they could be test and dev, or they could be remote office, branch office opportunities for large enterprises that want to spend a full storage solution and spend that money on the core data center, but for the remote office, have spectrum scale delivered over software, an ideal solution, and various consumption models whichever fits their need. So David Floyer just wrote a piece on, on wikibon.com uh, uh, talking about latency and capacity storage at a very high level, sort of segmenting the market mm -hmm. th those ways and sort of sizing it up and projecting some of the trends. And obviously latency storage, he's thinking you know, more flash oriented, capacity right. storage, more, more disk, spinning disk and, and tape. Is that a reasonable way to look at the business and how does it apply to your portfolio? So, we do think that's a reasonable way to look at it. You have, if you will, a performance segment and a capacity segment depending. The number of things that people need to really look at when they buy storage. First of all, I'm a storage guy for 30 years. No one cares about storage. It's all about the data. 
It's all about the data that your storage optimizes. It's about the workload, the application, and the use case. Eric, well, I do too, <laughs> but unfortunately, almost every Buyers CIO. Buyers, maybe not so much. CIO I was going to say, almost every CIO is a software guy. Right. So it's how does the storage optimize my software environment? And that's what's critical to them. So we see certain applications that are very performance sensitive, certain SLAs they need to meet. We have some that are medium sensitive, and we have some that, of course, are very capacity oriented, which is our spectrum scale. One exabyte with a single customer. Now that's capacity. That's an ocean of data. But we also have solutions we're able to put it together. So for example, in a lot of data analytics workloads that would run in spectrum scale, we actually sell a lot of our all flash flash systems. Use the flash to ingest the data, use flash to manage the metadata, use the flash to run the search engine in a big giant config such as that. And when you're running an analytics workload, you run the analytics workload on that flash. Yet, you're really doing a very large deployment, hundreds of petabytes to an exabyte with our spectrum scale. So we see, if you will, a continuum, and the key thing is IBM offers all of the various piece parts to any level of the continuum, and in that example I just gave, combining high performance and deep high capacity software in a single solution to meet a business need. So, I mean, IBM's an unbelievable company. You think about Watson, Cloud, Bluemix, the analytics business, deep, deep, heavy R&D, Z mainframes, you got all the pieces. How is the storage business, how can it better leverage those other pieces, and, and is, it, or is, it, is it relevant, or is it just, just take the storage hill? So, we see our storage products as integrating with our others, so for example, we do a lot of deals where they buy a mainframe in our DS8000, Sure. We offer integrated infrastructure, not only with Cisco, but actually with the Power family as well. It's called Pure Power, and that has an integrated V7000 with a power server, and we're looking at deepening that relationship as well. A lot of analytics workloads A lot of there. analytics workloads go Database. on spectrum scale, yeah. so whether yeah. they buy the Big Insights, whether they're using Watson, um, we've got several customers that use Watson, but buy flash systems because it's obviously very compute intensive. So they use flash systems to do that. So yeah, we fit in at the same time, we have plenty of customers that don't buy anything else from IBM and just buy storage. So we are appealing to a very broad audience. Those that are traditional IBM shops that buy a lot of different products from IBM and those that don't. In fact, one of our um, public references is General Mills. They had not bought anything from any division of IBM for 50 years. And one of our channel partners in Minnesota, we were able to get in there with our XIV product, and now not only do they buy XIV and some Spectrum Protect for backup, but they've actually started to buy some other technology from IBM. And for 50 years, they bought nothing from IBM from any division. So in that case, storage led the way. So again, in certain accounts, we're in there with the DS8000 and Z, or we're in there with Watson and Flash Systems. In other accounts, we're pioneering, and in some cases, we're the only product they buy. They don't buy from IBM. We will meet whichever need they have. Now, in periods in the last, I mean, it's been an ebb and flow in the storage business for IBM. In periods of the last decade, IBM had deep R&D, but the products couldn't seem to go to market. Now, you shared with me under, under NDA, so we can't talk about it in detail, but shared with me the roadmap. And, and the, the product roadmap is accelerating from, well, at least maybe it's just my impression, from what I'm used to. Should we expect to see a much more you know, steady cadence of product delivery from IBM going forward? Absolutely, so keeping in our spirit of oceans, we ride the wave, we don't fight the wave. And in today's era, in any era of high tech, not just in storage, doesn't matter whether it's storage, whether it's servers, whether it's web 2.0, whatever it is, it's all about innovation and doing it quickly. So we're going to ride that wave of innovation. We're going to have a regular cadence of releases. We released four different members of Spectrum plus two Versus stacks. And next quarter you'll see five, rele five major product releases in one quarter. And then in Q1 you're going to see another three. So we're making sure that as this trajectory of innovation hits all of high tech in all segments, that IBM storage is not going to be left behind and we're going to continue to innovate on an accelerated pace. Yeah, that pace is, is really important. You know, IBM, again, spends a lot of money in R&D. It's key to get that product into the pipeline. Let's talk about uh, VMware and VMworld. Obviously, we're here at VMworld. So yes. VMware, a very important constituency, a lot of customers. You got you to talk to VMware if you want to be in the data center today. What is your strategy around VMware specifically, but also generally as it relates to multi-cloud environments, whether it's your own cloud or other clouds, OpenStack, I wonder if you could talk about that a little so bit. So let's take virtualization first. So we support a number of different hypervisors. We support VMware extensively, we support Hyper-V, we support KVM, 
we support OVM, we support open initiatives like OpenStack, Cinder, we support Hadoop, we have Hadoop connectors in many of our products. So whether it's a cloud deployment or a virtual deployment, we want to make sure we support everybody. For example, Spectrum Protect was announced last week with support for SoftLayer as a target device, basically a tier. Well guess what? In 1H, we're going to support Amazon and Azure, not just SoftLayer. So again, we want to make sure we support everything. With VMware specifically, for the first time ever, VMware has invited IBM storage on Stave at three sessions. IBM has done things in the server world in the past, but we have never, ever, ever been invited by VMware to their technical sessions. In fact, one is at five o'clock today. It's called Project Capstone, which they publicly announced uh, last week, and it's about deploying Oracle environments in VMware virtualization. And it's a partnership with VMware, with IBM Flash Systems All Flash, and with HP Superdome servers. And that's going to be on stage at five o'clock today here at Moscone Center. Awesome, so um, we're starting to see a, a tighter relationship with, with VMware, building out the portfolio. What do you say to the customer who says, yeah, I, I hear you, but VMware's doing all this sort of interesting stuff around things like vSAN. What do you, what do you tell a customer? You know, what about that? So we see vSAN as a, you know, in this era of behemoths, everyone is your partner and everyone is your competitor. Uh, we work with Intel all the time. Other divisions of IBM think Intel's a major competitor. Some of our server division work with some of our storage competitors. So we think, you know, we will work with everyone and while we work with VMware in a number of angles, so if vSAN's a little bit of a competitor, that's fine and we see an open space for all of the solutions in the market today. All right, we got to leave it there, Eric, but last question. So take us through sort of your objectives for IBM storage over the, you know, near and midterm. What do you, what should we be watching? So our big thing is to make sure we keep the cadence up. There's so much development going on, whether that be in software defined, in integrated infrastructure, in all flash, in all the areas that we are going to make sure that we continue to develop in every area. We've got the billion dollars in all flash and the billion dollars in software defined. We are going to spend it and we're going to bring those products to market that fit the need so that the oceans of data that everyone is dealing with can be handled appropriately, cost effectively, and quite honestly, that oceans of data, it's about the business value of the data not the storage underneath. So we're going to make sure that for all those oceans of data, we will allow them to drive real business value and make sure that those data oceans are protected, meet their SLAs, and are always available to their end user base. I love it, you got the Steve Mills billion dollar playbook. Obviously he worked in Linux, it was well over a billion in, uh, in the analytics business. IBM's a leader there, applying it to Flash. Great acquisition of Texas Memory Systems. You become a leader there, now going after the software to find. Eric Herzog, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Great, Always thanks very pleasure. much, we love to have. <laughs> All right, Thank keep it right you. there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest right after this world. We're live from VMworld in Moscone. Keep it right there. <laughs>